What good folks it's Darktree19 and welcome back to another What If Naruto Was Venom Part 4 so like comment subscribe and share but besides all that enjoy the video. Chapter 4 Victory and Changes The Invasion of Konoha Had Begun, As Sound Shinobi Allied With Suna Shinobi Attacked The Leaf Village With The Intention Of Crushing Its People, And Making Sure That Nothing Remained. However, Because Of A Certain Traitorous Act Made By One Suchi Kim, The Leaf Shinobi Were Ready For Them, And Some Of The Strongest Leaf Shinobi In The Village Were Already Countering The Attack With Their Own. Jiraiya had been briefed on the entire situation from the information given to the Hokage by Tsuchi Kin and made a few interesting traps for the invaders outside along with the inside of Konoha. For the outside, Jiraiya had prepared for the waves of sound shinobi coming into the village to overpower their foes with sheer numbers, and the explosive seals placed where the sound shinobi were heading soon after deployment were soon destroyed with only bloody clumps remaining. The Sanin had also placed seals around the cage booth to activate when Chakra ran through it which worked in killing three of the four members of Orochimaru's personal bodyguards, and the one female of the group escaping the trap only to be caught in a wujutsu before being knocked out by the Anbu that made it. And that was just the sound side of losses. Soon his side was losing far more and much worse with the snake summoners being killed by Niko's Anbu unit along with one Gekko Hayate before they could even complete the snake summoning. Those that ran, were hunted down by Inuzuka clan members, and were ripped to pieces by both the leaf shinobi as well as their dogs. In the streets, the infamous Inoshika Cho Jounin team were stamping out both allied invaders, and keeping damage to the buildings to a minimum. In Konoha's prize stadium used for events, celebrations, and right now what was once the Chonin exam finals a bloody battle was being waged. Sound and Suna Shinobi had disguised themselves as civilians to pop out at the moment to strike unsuspecting Leaf Shinobi. At the stadium floor of the arena where the Chonin exam fights had begun, a new one appeared, only this time it wasn't to advance to another legal fight, and it wasn't to get promoted. It was one of survival. Subaku no Gara had finally gone totally insane with the sand demon inside of him that had accelerated the process by leaps and bounds. He had already caught Rock Lee by surprise with the transformed demonic sand arm the Shukaku vessel now sported and was hit hard by a backhand that sent the poor Janan skidding back while breaking a few ribs in the process. Guy came down to retrieve his student while knocking down Sound and Suna Shinobi that stood in his path. While this happened, Baki had engaged Genma, and Konkuro was currently fighting off Shino in the fighter's box. Blood. I must have blood for mother. IT must rain down upon US, yelled Gara, as he turned his demonically changing form to Ten Ten, Tamari, and Naruto now surrounding him. Easy Gara. Don't do anything stupid now said Naruto folding his arms in front of his chest and gauging the red-haired Suna boy's current body movement. Why should I listen to you Namikaze? Just because you have a stronger beast inside of you doesn't make you stronger than me. I will crush you with my sand and gain true existence, said Gara, as he snarled at Naruto, and got ready to shoot his demonic sand arm right at him when Tamari stepped in. Gara, stop. Don't you see we're being used? We can fix your seal, to take away the insanity and you can finally sleep without being destroyed from the inside by the demon our bastard father placed in you. Isn't that what you want Gara? To have some kind of normalcy? Said Tamari, as she knew Gara was in constant agony because of their ever power hungry father, and becoming soon as prized weapon instead of being a person. I don't care what happens to me Tamari. All I want is to kill the strongest of opponents in order to prove my existence to the world and there is not a shinobi among the leaf that is going to stand in my way, said Gara, as he aimed his clawed hand at her and struck out with all his insane fury. While Gara's hand demonic hand was quick, Naruto's was quicker, and so was his skill with pulling people out of harm's way with his webbing. Infuriated, Gara went after the next girl in his line of sight that was Tenten, and the process repeated itself like it had with Tamari and Naruto preventing her from becoming a splatter on the nearby wall. This caused Gara to become further enraged by his desire, as well as Shukaku's to taste the blood of a leaf shinobi, and called upon more of the sand demon's influence to further help cause immense bloodbath. Well that was unfortunate. We need to get him away from the stadium or at the very least get him to go crazy on our own enemies, thought Naruto, as he knew that Gara's instability at the moment could work in the leaf's favor if it could be directed at the enemy, and push them back. What are we going to do Naruto-kun? Said Tenten, who got a glare from Tamari that was behind the other blonde's head, and the weapons girl stuck her tongue out in defiance since she wasn't about to let some girl from Suna have him without a fight. We need to direct Gara's warpath towards Sound and Suna forces since he'll take out anyone around him. And we think we have the ideal target, said Naruto pointing up towards the cage box where the old Hokage was battling his former student, who had disguised himself as the Kaze Kage, and though the old fire shadow holding his own at this moment in time, would not last much longer because of his old age. 
you want him to go up there? Said Tamari, as she saw the battle between the two, and wondered what had happened to her father. Not that she hoped her father was alive. Gara holds no love for his father and even less for anyone that takes the pleasure of killing him before anyone else, said Naruto, as he sees Gara was currently trying to go after Guy, who was holding Lee, and trying to get away from them while knocking any enemy shinobi in his way towards the psycho redhead. The enemy of my enemy is my friend? Said Ten Ten, as she felt this was something similar, but different all the same, and saw Gara turn to face them. Yep. Hey Gara, You want to prove your existence right? Said Naruto, as he got the attention of the boy in question, and Gara looked at him with insanity filled eyes. What of it Namikaze? Are you trying to help me prove my existence? Said Gara, as he was feeling a new wave of bloodlust run through his body, and it was aimed at the spider symbol wearing shinobi. As tempting as that may be, the answer is no, and have an even better victim we mean stronger opponent for you that will help prove your existence if you agree to fight him, said Naruto, as he saw the boy's eyes go wide, and the hunger for a strong opponent was growing exponentially. Who? said Gara, as he knew the Namikaze in front of him was strong, but someone even stronger was better, and if Naruto was willing to point him in the right direction well, perhaps he could let the fox vessel be spared this one time. The one that killed your father actually. Orochimaru of the Sanin is up there fighting the leaf Hokage and holding his own against the old man. Surely a cage level opponent is worthy of you, and the blood your mother wants? Said Naruto, as he played on the fact that the stronger the opponent, the greater the desire to act on the bloodlust formed from it, and right now the thought of killing a Sanin was something Gara just couldn't pass up. Not in his current state of mind anyway. Gara didn't respond, as he turned his half-demonic face towards the cage booth, and saw the battle raging up there between the two before he jumped high into the air towards the battle. The thought of fighting the Sanin had always been in Gara's mind, as he had seen the man more than once on a visit to sound, and knew that eventually the two of them would do battle. Do you think that was wise Naruto-kun? Said Tamari, as she got a glare from Tenten, and the blonde Suna girl stuck her tongue out like the weapon using girl did before. Gara was molded to be a living weapon and while we hate to use him like that, it helps when fighting an enemy like Orochimaru, and when it's over we can fix your brother's seal, said Naruto, as he knew that the old man could hold off Orochimaru only for so long, and a little interference from a bloodlust-filled demon vessel was something that could tip the balance in the old Hokaye's favor. As much as I hate to admit it, he's right. Thought Tamari before she felt Naruto wrap his arm around her while Tenten put her arms around him with both girls' death glaring the other. Women, thought Naruto, as he sensed their death glares aimed at each other, and shot a web line at the Hokage booth before swinging towards the battle. As Naruto did this, Sasuke was fuming at being pinned down by enemy shinobi, and not being able to fight much stronger opponents like the one Gara was heading to right now. It was infuriating to the Uchiha that he could not be in the Chonin exams and even more that the dead last was able to win his place with powers that Sasuke did not possess. Sasuke felt he should have that power, not Naruto regardless of his clan name, as it was the belief of the last Uchiha that such powers were wasted on someone like Naruto, and should be put to better use to someone like him in order to kill his older brother. Sasuke swore he would get Naruto's power to make as his own and an Uchiha always got what he wanted with anyone that stood in his way dying a horrible death. Cage booth, Orochimaru was livid, as his ingenious plan to kill the third Hokage was being ruined before his very eyes, and right now the situation was becoming more infuriating by the second. His bodyguards were either dead or captured, his snake summoning he planned for the Suna teams outside of the village had been decimated, those in the stadium were being crushed, and the Hokage standing right in front of him was not dying so easily. With no prison to hold them in, Orochimaru was fighting a battle that he should have been winning from the start, and was unable to use his trump card in summoning the previous three Hokages to do his bidding. Though he could still try if the opportunity presented itself. It seems your plan failed by failure of a former student. To think that the dead last of your team would be stronger than you and you would be the second to him, said the Hokage taunting the Sanin before him knowing it would burn up the man's blood. Jiraiya is a perverted fool Sarutobi. Thinking more about getting into a woman's pants than being a shinobi and if you were smart you would have kicked him to the curb to focus more on me to make me strong enough to be the true yondame of Konoha, said Orochimaru, as he had hated the blonde-haired fool for taking what was rightfully his, and at every intention of making the leaf pay for the loss of power the title of Hokage would have granted him. Perverted? Yes. A fool? Sometimes, but not always. However, he is more than qualified to be a shinobi of the leaf than you are. And even if I were to die here I know the leaf will live through others that hold the will of fire, said the Hokage, as he had been able to keep his former student on even ground so far, 
and the third suspected it was because of the barrier falling that he even lasted this long with whatever it was that his traitorous student had planned for him. How very touching. It makes me want to puke out what is left of my morality right in front of you, said Orochimaru sneering at the old man and would have attacked had it not been for the interruption of one Subaku no Gara. Orochimaru of the Sanin, I will kill you, and prove my existence to the world through your death, said Gara, as he moved to attack the surprised Sanin, and nearly got the man had it not been for the reflexes the cage level shinobi possessed. You fool! Attack the Konoha shinobi down there below us and your existence will be acknowledged for all time, said Orochimaru, who was trying to get away from the red-haired demon vessel, and make sure he wasn't blind-sighted by Sarutobi. Why kill them, when I can kill you, and prove how strong I am in front of everyone, said Gara, as he launched sand shuriken at the Sanin, and when that didn't work tried to use the demonic sand arm he possessed to strike long range. Damn you. Wind style, wind breakthrough. Said Orochimaru, as he formed hand signs, and used his wind jutsu to knock Gara back off the roof onto the stadium ground while forcing the Hokage to jump out of the way of the attack. It caused the distraction the Sanin needed to perform as forbidden jutsu needed to tip the balance in his favor. No sooner had he started though, did Naruto land some 15 feet away with Tenten, and Tamari by his side ready to fight him. Hello heavy team. Ready to meet your death? Said Naruto before he transformed into his other version of Venom that made him so scary when it was revealed to others. Are you brat? Allow me to help introduce you to your father so you two can get some brief family bonding before he kills you under my order. Summoning Jutsu, impure world resurrection, said Orochimaru going for the one dead Hokage that none of the people here could beat and would be his ticket to victory. No. Naruto, you must cancel out his forbidden Jutsu, said the Hokage, as he didn't have the strength needed to cancel it but knew that Naruto did, and the boy needed to do it now. He's too late Sarutobi, it's already started, and soon all of you will know true defeat at my hands by using your precious successor as my weapon, said Orochimaru, as he let himself grin a truly evil grin, and saw the large coffin with the kanji for four written on it before it stopped rising. Time to see if my father was as skilled with seals as Uro Senen said he was, thought Naruto, as the coffin lid fell revealing his old man and the body looking pretty well preserved at this point with the man's face looking like he was half asleep before walking out of the coffin to see his son. Sorry Toby you old monkey, did the heavy team do what I think he did, and summon me back to the land of the living? Said the Yondame, as he looked at the aged man, who had a few tick marks on his forehead, and wondered if he could possibly kill a dead man. Yes, but do you have to call me old monkey? If you weren't dead I would kill you for that, said Sorry Toby, as that nickname was embarrassing and while he could tolerate being called old man, being called old monkey was worse. Father, said Naruto, as he removed his venom face, and looked at his old man looking back at him with surprise. Naruto? Naruto my son, I see you have grown into a fine young man, and I see you have acquired some strange power. Tell me, has the village been treating you well, and seen you as a hero? Said the Yondame, as he had hope in his eyes, and wished his dying wish had been fulfilled. No, they haven't, said Naruto seeing the shocked and sad look on his father's face. I see. I'm sorry Naruto, but I had no choice, and did what needed to be done. I know I chose the village over you, but it is the job of the Hokage to do what is right, and if it means doing what I did, will you know when you take the title someday, said Minato, as he turned to look back at Orochimaru, who had kunai with a paper seal written on them, and grinned evilly at them. Enough of this family reunion. Soon you both will be dead and you can spend all your time catching up in hell, said Orochimaru, but before he could plant the seal tag into the Yondaime's skull, the kanji of the Sinigami appeared on the Namikaze's forehead, and the said man quickly summoned a Rasengan that made contact with the shocked Sanin stretched out hand causing it to obliterate it. Surprised? You should have done your research on how I died exactly Orochimaru and that when one gives their soul to the Sinigami you are bound to him for all eternity, said Minato, as he grinned at the currently wailing in pain Orochimaru, and before the Sanin could jump to freedom, he was pulled down by Naruto's web line onto the roof floor. You didn't think we were going to let you go on account of your missing arm did you? Said Naruto, as he shot another web line to the Sanin's remaining hand to stop him from using any one-handed jutsus, and the lovely ladies beside the younger Namikaze hand their feet on his back with their weapons drawn. You ready to finish what you should have started old monkey? Said Minato, as he saw the third shake his fist at him but sighed knowing that the name was forever his so long as Minato kept it up even now, and took out the Sarutobi clan sword he had taken with him for this moment. Time for you to go meet the Sinigami himself Orochimaru, said Sarutobi, who saw the Sanin struggling to get away, but was stopped by Tenten stabbing him in spine, 
and Tamari smashing the joint connecting the man's remaining arm to his shoulder with her iron fan. This can't be the end. I am Orochimaru of the Sanin. I am a god compared to all other beings on this earth, thought Orochimaru, as he tried to get away once more, and found it increasingly difficult with his injuries. Time to die my disloyal student, said Sarutobi, as he pierced Orochimaru's skull with his sword, and pulled it out to wipe the blood off of it. Well that was pleasant, said Naruto, as he walked up to them changing into his normal clothing, and looked at his father's form starting to decay with the kanji for Sinigami leaving the former fire shadow's forehead. Man this really sucks. I only just became summoned here and I have so little time to spend with my forsaken son. What the hell have you been doing while he was growing up old monkey? Don't tell me you let those councils pushed you around? Said Minato, as his body began to decay faster, and the old Hokage looked a bit guilty. They threatened to remove me for Donzo if I didn't bend to someone of their demands, but I did what I could despite that, and Jiraiya hasn't exactly been the proper guardian either until recently, said the Sandaime, as he was not going to take all the blame for this, and could easily pin most of it on Jiraiya. I should have known. Jiraiya never did have a level head since he thought more often than not with the other one between his legs. Well, hopefully you gave the super pervert a good beating son for neglecting you like he did all these years, and made him fully understand that in doing so makes him a total baka, said Minato, who smiled at Naruto, and the boy in return smiled back. Of course. Though I did have help from the many beautiful women that were in the hot springs he was peeping on, said Naruto seeing the two girls infatuated with him looking at him with raised eyebrows and the unasked question that was going through their minds was what were you doing at the hot springs? Or the more obvious statement that they wanted to say that was I should have been one of the beautiful women beaten up that super pervert to gain Naruto-kun's favor. Among others that were different on all fronts. Take care Naruto and find happiness no matter where it may come from. As for you old monkey, you better take better care of my son, or so help me I'll cut open a hole in the Sinigami's belly to come back to kick your ass myself, said Minato, as he saw more tick marks on Sarutobi's head, and Naruto laughed at the time bomb his father had just created. I make a mental note of it, but I have a question for you before you die, and I would like an answer. Do you think right before fighting the QB that you could have, oh I don't know, told me that you used shadow clones to do all that goddamn paperwork? Said the old Hokage, who looked ready to pound the decaying, and current sheepish yondaime before him. Oh. About that. You see uh, I, um, bye, said yondaime before his body turned into ashes and said ashes were scattering to the winds leaving Naruto raising an eyebrow the two women sweat dropping, and the old Hokage more red with anger than ever before. I'll see you soon Minato. I may be alive now, but I'm old so I'll die eventually, and when I do we're going to finish this little conversation, thought the Sandaime, as he wanted to beat the crap out of the remains of the ashes left behind, but couldn't since he was getting tired from the fight from Orochimaru, and before he could reconsider it the ashes were gone. Konoha days later, the invasion by Suna and Sound ended soon after the news spread of Orochimaru's death with Suna forces retreating while Sound Shinobi surrendered on the spot to await further interrogation. Gara had been captured quickly by Jiraiya shortly after the boy's fall to the ground and the Sanin had used the five-prong seal to make sure that Shukaku didn't get out while he was unconscious. After that, Jiraiya took Gara some place remote, and began working on improving the seal to work at the potential it was supposed without all the negative side effects the Kazekage didn't care his son would have. As for the Sandaime, he made sure that the councils knew that he was very much alive, and just like he thought they were very much surprised that he was. Upon taking his seat, the Sandaime began to tell what happened with his encounter with Orochimaru, and how he summoned the Yondaime to the battle only for the plan to backfire causing the end for the late Sanin. This made the two councils sweat at this since the Yondaime made it clear that he wanted his son to be seen as a hero and they kind of made sure the village did the exact opposite. What's more with the public now knowing about Naruto being his son made things really difficult to explain to the various feudal lords and previous clients now looking at the leaf with suspicious eyes. It was no different when it came to the villagers and shinobi of the leaf too since they were the ones that hated Naruto from listening to the councils. Many in the village had tried to apologize to Naruto, but found that he wasn't listening to them, or when they tried to he would web swing away. And that was when he was being nice. Flashback one day prior, Naruto walked down the streets of Konoha not bothering to give the citizens that once hated, attacked, and tried to kill him the time of day. Why should he? It wasn't like they deserved it after what they put him through. Many had come up to him groveling at his feet saying they didn't know, as if him being a member of a prestigious clan was some form of immunity to their hatred, and his past life had they known about it sooner. With him was his ever loyal slave Kin, who he had promised to take clothes shopping once more, and some more birth control pills for the near future. 
What? Naruto was a sex machine at night and other days when Kin would stand before him naked almost as horny as he was. Ino was still reluctant of course since she felt she was too young for that sort of thing, but it wasn't like she could resist much longer with her hearing the echoes of Kin's screams of pleasure at night, and their room being right next door. In fact, their activities at night were giving Ino some interesting, and very perverted dreams that made her have to change her bed sheets on several occasions. It was insane. But that's a story for another day. Now Naruto was dealing with a store owner, who was welcoming Naruto in like he was Kemi himself, and Kin like she was from the Hyuga clan. Personally, Naruto despised the man since in the past the lousy arrogant bastard had threatened to carve him up with a butcher's knife, and leave in the alley to bleed to death. Even now, Naruto suspected that the man would have been hostile to him if he wasn't the Yondaime's son, and just some bastard child that was left in a stupid orphanage to fend for himself. Well if the man thought of him as a bastard child, then Naruto would give him a bastard child, and treat the man like he was garbage. Will you be needing anything else Naruto-sama? What about the lovely woman here? All on the house. Take what you want, said the shop owner, who months, and even years ago would have rejected the boy from entering his store in less than a second. Now however, well, things changed. Hold that thought. Kin-chan, be a sweet sweet sexy slave, and please wait outside with your things. Your master has to talk to the store owner in private about some, personal business, said Naruto, as he looked at the man, who seemed confused, but slightly pleased at doing more business with the Namikaze, and even hoped it would help make amends for past, insults. Yes Naruto-sama, said Kin, as she went outside by the door, and knew that whatever her master had in mind did not concern her. Now, where were we? Oh yes. You wanted to sell me something didn't you? Anything we wanted correct? Said Naruto, as he walked towards the man with intense blue eyes, and could see the man was getting nervous. Yes Naruto-sama. Who wouldn't want to sell goods to a clan like yours? Said the shop owner, as the blue eyes were making him nervous now, and the black clothing the boy wore was rippling slightly. You. You did years ago when we tried to enter your store and you threw us out because of what we held. You threatened to carve us up like a chicken before leaving us in an alley to die slowly. Now that you know we are the son of the Yondaime, you wish to kiss our feet, and our ass in order to make up for past treatment like it didn't even happen. To us, that simply doesn't cut it, and we feel you need to pay a price for it, said Naruto, as he transformed into his humanized venom form making the store owner back up in fear. Please don't kill me. I'm sorry for what I did. I was just following the majority of the people, said the shop owner, who was now a fraction of an inch from pissing himself silly. You're sorry for hurting us, insulting us, and threatening to do seriously harm despite that we are not the demon fox we hold inside of us. Perhaps you want the demon to be let out to cause you bodily harm and maim you for life that would be worse than death, said Naruto, as his form began to ripple again, and the cracking of his hands when clenched into fists was making the shop owner go into a near panic state. No. I mean yes. I mean uh, um, look how about any time you come into my store, I'll give you anything you want for free, and all your friends when they are with you? Said the shop owner, as he looked outside to see Kin standing idly by the door, and waiting for her master patiently. Now you are trying to buy me off? We don't want your money, what you have to offer in your store, and we certainly don't want your false pleas for forgiveness, said Naruto, as his anger increased, and the man backed up into a wall. What do you want? Said the shop owner now looking at Naruto with fear and saw the rippling increase further. What we want, is for you to feel our pain, said Naruto, as he transformed into his demonized venom form, and was now towering over the quivering little man. The last restraint the shop owner had in not wetting himself left at the very moment. Mercy. Please show mercy, said the shop owner, as he didn't want to feel any pain that karma dictated he feel, and should feel for past transgressions. Sorry. We are all out of, mercy, said Naruto, as he gave the man a demon smile, and expanded his now clawed hands out to do some serious damage. Outside the store, hey kin, said Kiba, as he, and Shino had been around helping with the repair work around Konoha for the places that got messed up. Ah, Kiba-sama and Shino-sama. How are you today? Said Kin, as she had met the two, and while Kiba was arrogant she did have respect for the Inuzuka clan along with the Abarame clan. I am doing alright. How are you? I understand you were sent to Aviki for something you said about Naruto-sama during the preliminaries, said Kin, as she saw Kiba pale at that, and saw Shino eyebrow twitch at that since the man was scary. Yeah. Let's just say I'm not getting any good night's sleep right now and my mom's on my case about that. 
she has to make some sort of reconciliation to Naruto since it's the only way not to get me executed for practically violating an S-class law while insulting the Namikaze clan that happened to be where the Yondaime was from, said Kiba, as he didn't like the fact that he got his clan in trouble, and that he had to be punished for it. His late father had told him to hate Naruto so why shouldn't he have listened to the man before he died? You should be respectful to Naruto-sama for his burden and how he had to endure pain from this village that only loves him now because of his title, said Kin, as she did not want anyone to insult her master, and she wasn't going to let this runt do it. Kibo was about to retort, but was stopped when the store owner, or rather what was left of him came out of the shop while trying to let out a scream from the throat he no longer possessed. Walking out of the store, a normal black-clothed Naruto looked at Kin with a smile on his face, and motioned her to follow him. See you around guys, said Naruto, as he walked with Kin, who leaned her head into his chest, and asked him if he was okay to which he responded saying he was in fact, Naruto was feeling really good right now, and was going to get better as the day went on. Flashback end, since then the people were put on notice about how groveling to Naruto was going to work and they were going to live with the shame of what they did with the Namikaze air putting salt on the wound every time. As for the Subaku family from Suna, they helped heal the rift between the two villages, as Kankuro took care of the negotiating with the help of Baki to aid him, Gara was appointed the new Kazekage since he was still the strongest shinobi from Suna, and Tamari was promoted to Chonin while she stayed in Konoha to help further relations in being Suna's personal ambassador. With the knowledge of what happened with Suna coming to light and wanting to break free from the slowly poisoning treaty made by each country's respectable feudal lords, a new treaty was set up so each daimyo would not seek out the other, and if they did it was something only together they could handle. If such missions did happen, the payment for the missions would be divided equally in half, and sharing of information about common enemies that would threaten their village. As for the Chonin exams themselves, Tujinan from the Leaf were promoted for their skills during the exam, and the invasion itself in protecting the village from the certain defeat that would befall it had it not been for them. Naruto was promoted of course, as he had done everything right during the exams to get promoted, and trick an unstable Gara to go after Orochimaru. Neji's advance as well, as he showed the skills needed for being a Chonin, and he showed that he had the skills needed to get promoted though it was recommended he go under a psychological exam before the promotion was in effect. Unfortunately for Lee, Shino, and Tenten they were not promoted since Lee's fight was interrupted by the invasion while Tenten's was a victory by forfeit like Shino's. The remaining rookie 9 or rather the rookie 8 after what happened with Ino had asked about the said girl not being a shinobi anymore. It wasn't easy to explain, as teammate Sensei was there too, and she was glaring at him quite a bit since she suspected him of being a pervert. However, the group understood, and they believed Naruto when he told them he was treating her like a person rather than property while telling Kuranai that he had not had sex with the Yamanaka since that was the question the Genjutsu mistress wanted to ask him. Sasuke demanded that Naruto hand over his power to him on the grounds that the Uchiha clan needed it more than the Namikaze clan did in restoring itself to greatness. Sakura demanded that Ino be freed from him and called him a pervert regardless of the fact he had not done anything to Ino. Naruto of course said no to both individuals since the slavery was permanent unless he chose to alter the seal so she would be a housewife instead and he told Sasuke that his power was his own while telling the Uchiha to grow from the skills his clan home possessed when he wasn't training with Kakashi. Speaking of Kakashi, the man was trying to get back in Naruto's graces, and was making every attempt he could at wanting to train his student that was his sensei's son. Using good old-fashioned karma as his best weapon in this situation, Naruto ignored Kakashi, and told the man to stay away from him or else he would be put into the hospital with only gay porn that would be read out loud by the nurses. For a while things seemed to be going Naruto's way before the Hokage called him into his office with Ino's mother demanding to face the boy that had enslaved her daughter. Both Naruto and the Sandaime both almost wishing they were fighting in the invasion again. Hokage's office, Sarutobi Haruzan side at the sight of an angry platinum blonde woman glaring at him while they waited for Naruto to show up with Ino in tow. One of the conditions of this meeting set by Ino's mother Yamanaka rose to see her daughter since she had been denied so by Naruto ever since the angry woman learned of it. I'm here and I brought Ino, said Naruto, as he was in his venom form, and Ino was in her usual clothing she wore all the time just without the wrappings. Naruto kept saying she should show off her legs and had been having her eat more while burning off the fat by exercising so her figure would improve rather than decline. Ino of course blushed, called him a pervert, and would have slugged him had she not been his slave. I want my daughter freed from your clutches pervert, yelled Rose, as she got out of chair, and moved towards Naruto to take her daughter from him. Now I know where Ino gets her yelling from, thought the Sandaime and Naruto, as they had to run a finger through their ears to make sure they didn't lose their hearing. What you want, we cannot give you Yamanaka-san, and we cannot let Ino go, 
said Naruto, as he leapt away from Ino's mother at the last moment with Ino, and stood next to the Hokaye's desk. I'm afraid Naruto is right Rose. Ino did break several high-class laws, said Sarutobi, as he saw the woman getting redder with anger, and wondered if the woman's head was going to explode. He hoped not since the paperwork would be a pain in the ass to do even with the shadow clones. Yes, but one of the laws you revoked during the Chonin exams, and that was during the revealing of the Dem Namikaze's identity, said Rose, but she knew that her hatred for the boy was beyond what happened with Ino, and that it was with Kyubi. True, but Ino broke the one law before it was revoked, and the only reason she isn't dead right now is because of Naruto. As for the other law, which pertains to entering a clan home illegally, your daughter brought that onto herself, and that relates to clan laws that were set up during the Shadaim's time. The only way your daughter can be free of her slavery, is if Naruto wishes it, and makes her his wife while being just a housewife with no shinobi skills to speak of unless he wants it. The other way would be if he left both options aside and had her memory wiped of all the events beforehand with no memory of anyone around her. You could not tell her you are her daughter, you cannot adopt her back into your home, and you would see her live a life not knowing anyone in the very beginning of her life. In all honesty, Naruto's decision to make her his slave is the best course of action, and if you still disagree then I'm afraid that all you can do, said the old Hokage, as he saw the woman once more fume with rage, and glaring hatefully at Naruto. Do you like living as this boy's slave Ino? To do what he asks of you against your very will? Has he forced himself onto you? Said Rose making Ino blush in embarrassment while Naruto just shook his head since this was becoming a broken record for him. Mom. To answer your questions, I don't like being a slave, but I can't hate it either since Naruto has been fair to me and he hasn't asked me to do anything perverted. And for the last question, the answer is no he has not had sex with me, and has been very respectful about that, said Ino, as she blushed further while trying not to tell her mother of him taking her, and the screams of pleasure that echoed into her room at night were in her head on occasion. She was really suspecting either Naruto or Ken were doing it on purpose. Are we done here? Said Naruto, as he saw the older Yamanaka was glaring at him still before she left the room, and slammed the door when she left. You'll have to take that as a yes in regards to this matter, but there is one other I need to address with you Naruto. It concerns one of my other students, said the Sandaime, who saw Naruto nod in understanding, and sat down with Ino in the chairs in front of the man's desk. What matter are you talking about, old monkey, said Naruto grinning at the man, who now had a tick mark on his forehead, and couldn't believe the boy was following in his father's footsteps and nicknames for people. I'm going to pretend I didn't hear that. As for the situation with my other student Senju Tsunade, who is the granddaughter of the Shadaim, and grandniece of the Naidaim being left to wander the elemental countries. I came to the realization during my time fighting Orochimaru prior to Gara's interference that without certain events happening, I would have died, and someone else would be sitting in this chair that did not have the village's best interest at heart. What I need from you Naruto, is to go with Jiraiya, and find Tsunade to bring her here so she can take my place as, Hokage, said the Sandaime as he saw the shocked faces on both Ino, and Naruto though the latter didn't look pleased. What? Said Naruto, as he transformed into Venom's demonic form, and threw the desk in front of him out the window in rage. I know you want the job Naruto and I would more the happily give it to you, but you're too young for it. I'm getting old Naruto, as does everyone, and soon I won't be able to defend myself against a Jounin if I should encounter one. Tsunade is one last student among the Sanin and while her habits are, questionable at times, I think she can hold the title of Hokage long enough for you to take it from her down the road, said the old Hokage, who knew that logic would help Naruto calm down, and see things like they should be. Alright, but we want a few people to come along with us for the mission to be an extra set of ears, and I since Uro Senen is going to wonder to look for some tale to pounce on, said Naruto having returned to normal, as he sat back down, and looked seriously at the old man seeing him nod in agreement. Who did you have in mind? said the Sandaime, as he raised an eyebrow at the blonde, and the boy smirked at him before telling him just who he wanted. Namikaze estate two hours later, what? We're going to find Tsunade-sama, yelled Tenten, as she had been invited to the Namikaze estate along with Hinata, and Naruto told them the news about the mission. Yes. That was the mission the old man gave us, as he wanted Uro Senen to find her with my help, but we requested both of your assistance in this mission, and to be honest we trust you more than Uro Senen in finding her, said Naruto, as he was being hugged nearly to death by Tenten who he knew was a big fan of the female Sanin, and wanted to be strong just like her. But Naruto-sama, the Hokage wants you to interrogate my friend Tuya from Sound Village since she was Orochimaru's elite bodyguard, and she would know most of his base locations in Rice Country, 
said Kin, as she sat beside her master on one side, and Eno sitting reluctantly on the other side while trying not to look like she nervous in seeing her friends while being a slave at the same time. True, but the old monkey wants to wait until we get Tsunade back for that. That way he can help instruct me personally on a few things with the help of Iviki, said Naruto before he made a throat-like noise at Ten Ten, who was still latched onto him while groping his muscles involuntarily, and the girl let out a very Hinata-like eep. When she let go of him with her face going cherry red. When do we leave for the mission Naruto-kun? Said Hinata, as she had to restrain her face from looking at Ten Ten, and glaring at her with the Byakugan active. In two days Hinata-chan. You both need to get ready for the mission since we'll be the mission's leader when Jiraiya isn't, which we estimate will be a lot during the time he's drunk, or out looking to get laid. He fails miserably we might add from the way so many women beat the crap out of him, said Naruto making the women around him laugh at the Sanin's expense. Two days? Come on Hinata, we have to pack, and get ready, said Ten Ten, as she grabbed Hinata, and dragged the protesting girl out of the house since the Hyuga heiress wanted to spend more time with her crush to possible have say I mean better relations with him. For the good of the Hyuga clan of course. I would thought they'd never leave. Hinata-sama and Tenten-sama looked like she wanted to jump you, said Kin, as she snuggled up against him, and he kissed the top of her head while Ino looked to leave only to be stopped by Naruto webbing her back to tell her to stay. Stay Ino, said Naruto, as he kissed Kin on the lips while Kin herself moved to straddle her master's lap while grinning at him, and then at Ino with the blushing platinum blonde trying not to stare at the duo making out. You want Ino-san to see us being intimate Naruto-sama? said Kin, as she saw Naruto with a fox-like grin on his face, and Ino was blushing redder than a tomato right now. She has been hearing it for the past couple nights since her room is right next door so seeing it shouldn't make any bit of difference. Right? said Naruto, as he snaked his hands under her shirt to grab her breast making Kin moan, and she gyrated her hips into his to feel his erection. You're the master here Naruto-sama so your word is law to us, said Kin, as she took off her shirt, and let Naruto remove her bra to expose the breasts he had been playing with. Could you please not do this in front of me? Said Ino, as she was feeling uncomfortable with them having sex in front of her much less the couch in the living room, and felt her body get hot underneath her clothing. Why Ino-chan? Getting horny? If you only saw what was beyond Naruto's waist, you wouldn't be complaining so much, and join in to give him more pleasure, said Kin, as she saw Naruto's pants recede to reveal his boxers while Naruto himself had taken off her pants to reveal she had no panties on. I'll pass, thank you very much, said Ino, as she tried not to stare, and tried to ignore the moans of pleasure the two were giving the other with their hands groping the other. While we respect you decision Ino-chan, it will not help you when we are gone on the mission leaving just you, and Kin-chan alone in this house, said Naruto, as he kissed Kin's neck, and grabbed her right ass cheek fiercely making the former female shinobi archer back in pleasure that was increased when his hand on her ass cheek with a slave seal on it was wrapped in his chakra sending waves of pleasure through her body. W what do you mean by that? Said Ino, as she had come to believe that Naruto would not have sex with her until she was ready, and give it to him willingly. While we're away, Kin Chan is in charge, and if she wished to gain some form of sexual relief with you being her partner, said Naruto, who would have said more, but Kin had taken off his boxers, and began sucking on his hard erection making the man moan out in pleasure. Is he saying what I think he's saying? I don't swing that way. Thought Ino, as she looked from Naruto to Kin, and the sucking sound she was making on Naruto's erection being the only sound in the room at the moment with the Namikaze massaging his concubine's dark-haired head. I look forward to seeing how you taste too Ino-chan, said Kin, as she ran her tongue over the tip of Naruto's cock and then began to massage his balls with her free hand that wasn't already on his erection. But I don't swing that way, said Ino, as she got up from her seat in protest, and blushed further at the implication that she was while seeing her master's erection being pleasured by her sister. You will when Kin-chan gets done with you. Oh Kami, we're going to come Kin-chan, said Naruto, as he couldn't hold it off any longer, and released his seat into her mouth. Can we discuss this? Said Ino, as she was now getting close to hyperventilating, and seeing the look of pleasure on Naruto's face from having his orgasm wasn't helping either. What's there to discuss? You are Naruto-sama's slave just as I am and what he declares for us we must do like a good slave should in order to be rewarded. Right Naruto-sama? Said Kin, as she began to clean his erection off, and he looked down at her with a smile on his face. That's right Kin-chan. Speaking of rewards, get that sexy ass on my lap, and we'll give you yours, said Naruto, as he motioned for Kin to jump into his lap and jump she did while kissing him when lining up her pussy with cock before descending upon it. 
I'll never tire of this Naruto-sama, said Kin, as she moaned out in pleasure at him filling her up, and she began to ride him with Naruto helping her with his hands on her hips. We don't expect you to get tired of it Kin-chan, said Naruto before he kissed her again with his tongue and making his slave slash lover moan out in pleasure again. You're both perverts, said Ino, as she wanted to leave, but Naruto had ordered her to stay, and if she left it would mean punishment of Naruto's choice for disobeying him. And soon you will be too, along with Hinata-chan, Tamari-chan, Ten-chan, and Anko-chan though we sense she's a pervert already, said Naruto, as he saw Ino's face go red with anger, embarrassment, and the knowledge that Naruto was planning to turn a lot of female shinobi her or around her age into perverts like them. If I weren't your slave I would hit you right now, said Ino, as she felt powerless and not leaving, and even more with her own body since it was really getting frustrated with her right now. My Naruto-sama, it seems like Ino-chan is threatening you right now, and wishes to hit you for fucking your lovely slave. I think she needs to be disciplined, said Kin, as she was gasping, and panting from riding her master with Naruto thrusting up to meet her when she went up. I don't like where this is going, thought Ino, as she was really thinking of running right now, and hoped to make it to the door. We agree Kin-chan. So as punishment, you can do what you see fit to punish her while we are gone and finding Sanade, and the only stipulation is not taking her virginity, said Naruto, as he began to increase the pace, and Kin was doing the same with both getting close to coming. Now Ino decided to run. Or rather, she tried to add not Naruto's right hand became covered in black, and shot webbing at her waist before pulling her back with Ino's butt hitting floor. Naruto-sama, I'm coming, said Kin, as she was getting close to her climax, and Naruto wasn't far off from his own. Us too Kin-chan, said Naruto, as he sped up his pace, and made Kin have her orgasm before he did with both letting out a screams of pleasure at their release of sex juices. They are sex crazy. Thought Ino, as she tried to move again only for Naruto's right hand to shoot another batch of webbing around her pink skirt to reveal she was wearing black panties, and she let out a shriek at being exposed like that. Such naughty undergarments for one such as you Ino-chan. Maybe we should web those off of you before we let you walk out among the village populace? What do you think Kin-chan? Said Naruto, as her held Kin close to him, and stroked his slave's long hair with gentle affection. If it were up to me, I would leave her with only them on while you're gone, and make her wear them until they were too dirty to have on. Then I'd have her walk around naked doing chores, then I'd do all sorts of sexual things to her that would make her scream out in pleasure, and have her wait you upon your return to ravish all to your heart's content Naruto-sama, said Kin, as she looked over at Kin's position, and had a gleam in her eyes that Ino didn't like. That's so naughty Kin-chan. Then again, you will be lonely without us and you will need someone to find comfort in while we are away that resides in this home, said Naruto, as he knew that Ino had been very rebellious in regards to being a slave in the beginning, and had even protested his orders in doing some chore around the house. He had tolerated it because of Ino's defiant nature, but during the approaching time of the Chonin exam finals, Naruto had run out of patience with her I'm not doing some lousy chore that is not ladylike attitude, and had Kin take care of it while he went to compete in the finals. When Naruto got back after the invasion was officially over, Ino was tied up, her mouth gagged, had a sore cherry red colored ass up in the air for all that entered the room she was in to see, an equally red tear covered face filled with embarrassment to match, and a very solid understanding that disobeying Naruto's orders too many times was not a good thing. Though from time to time Ino still felt the need to, resist. Maybe I should have said something to mom, thought Ino, as she was nervous now and being alone with Kin while Naruto was gone and was now wishing for him to stay. Oh, thank you Naruto-sama, said Kin, as she kissed him deeply, and felt he was still inside her with his erection still hard like it was when he first entered her. Up for another round? Said Naruto, as he saw Kin looking at him lustfully, and nodded to him that she was. For you, always, said Kin, as she squealed in delight when he picked her up, flipped her around so her back was to his chest, and began to thrust into her at a commanding pace with Ino watching while stuck to the floor from the webbing. Hent Eep, said Ino, as her choice of words was cut off by Naruto webbing her mouth to prevent her from talking, and all the Yamanaka could do was watch the two go at it like rabbits on speed. Two days later Westgate, all set? Said Jiraiya, as the group traveling with him was ready, and the Sanin had to use all his willpower to not giggle perversely at the potential before him that would help with his research in his next book. Ready to go Uro Senen, unless you want to suspend the mission after we put you in the hospital for having perverted thoughts? Said Naruto as he had told the two girls with him that the man was a self-proclaimed super pervert, and to be careful of him at all times. Don't call me that. I have a reputation to uphold with a lot of influential people you know, said Jiraiya, who was met with a scoff from his student, and glares from the girls. With who? 
the 50-year-old perverted virgins of the elemental countries? Said Naruto, as he saw the man face fault, and shake his hand warningly at the Namikaze when he got back up. One of these days Naruto, you're going to get it, and not even your acrobatics will save you from my wrath, said Jiraiya before turning around to leave Konoha with the three young shinobi behind him. Be safe Naruto-sama, said Kin, as she had Ino beside her waving off their master, and wanted to make sure he knew they cared. We will Kin-chan. Ino-chan, you better behave while we're gone, or else Kin will have to discipline you, said Naruto, as he had been in a good mood after the loving making the boy had with Kin that day, and decided to give Ino one more chance to shape up in following the rules of a slave before he enforced martial law on her. Even now the term Naruto used would send a shiver down Ino's spine. Or was that the cold breeze that the wind that was traveling up her exposed legs? I will, Naruto-sama, said Ino, as she had felt uneasy about being around her friends while being classified as a slave, and found the questions a bit, invading into her new life. Even more so when Kiba perversely asked if Naruto had popped her cherry yet, which got him beat up by that crazy special jounin named Midorashi Anko, and sent the poor Inuzuka to the hospital with snake bites in rather unpleasant place on a male body. Ino had been grateful for the woman, who despite being a bit, psychotic was against the male perversion of things, and was a good friend to talk to. Until Anko asked the question that Kiba got beat up for, which made Ino believe that the special jounin was a female pervert, and hoped that the torture expert didn't like Naruto. If she did, then Ino was doomed if she was involved in one of their sex romps, and she did not want to be a female pervert, if she couldn't help it anyway. Remember Ino-chan, as long as Naruto-sama is gone, I'm in charge, and I have a strong feeling we are going to have lots of fun together, and more, said Kin, as she saw their sex god of a master head out on his mission, and gave Ino nice slap on the ass before rubbing the cheek with the slave seal on it. All Ino could do was blush and whimper since she knew she was in for a long couple of days, Chapter 5 Finding Trouble Naruto's eyebrow twitched at the sight of the sleeping snoring Sanin in front of him and wondered just how this man could have taught anyone much less his father. Behind him, Ten Ten, and Hinata also looked at the poor excuse of a man that was considered the strongest of the legendary three wondering how this man made it this far. Do you want to do the honors of waking him or should we? Said Naruto looking at the two girls behind him and saw them look at themselves before looking him with a shrug. Doesn't matter to us, as long as the lazy Baka gets up and takes us to where Tsunade-sama is, said Tenten, as she really wanted to meet her idol, and show her just how strong she had become to prove that women weren't weaker than men when it came to being a shinobi. Very well. Water style, water bullet jutsu. Said Naruto, as he made hand signs, and shot the water out from the bucket filled with it out at Jiraiya that sent him through a wall out into the street below. What the hell? Who do you it was you, said Jiraiya, as he saw the smug looking Naruto in front of him and scowled at it knowing that he possibly deserved it for sleeping in so late. So you're finally up we see. About damn time Uro Senen, we were beginning to think we would have to do something embarrassing to you, and make you look like a joke to snap you out of your sleeping, said Naruto, who saw the Sanin scowl further, but the glare from the two girls behind the Namikaze made Jiraiya think twice about hurting him. Yeah well, I'm not like you with a demon, and a symbiotic being inside of my body that can give me unrelenting stamina, said Jiraiya, as he looked away with a huff, and missed the two girls blushing at that comment while looking at Naruto. You make it sound like what we have is a bad thing for one such as us? Said Naruto, who sensed the girl's lust-filled looks at him, and made a note to keep himself partly awake to make sure neither girl raped him in his sleep. Shut up. Look, let me get cleaned up, and we can go find Tsunade before you decide to do something worse to me, said Jiraiya, as he went back inside, and grumbled on about blondes being a royal pain in the ass. Do you think he suspects you booby trapped his front door? Said QB, as he knew that Naruto was not done, and wanted to make his point get across on the Sanin. A loud boom and a scream soon echoed from the room signifying the trap was sprung. He does now, thought Naruto, who grinned at the image of the greatly feared Jiraiya of the Sanin being covered in feathers with a sign saying hello, my name is Mr. Rooster Coburn. On his body. Life was getting better every day. One week later, are we there yet? said Naruto boringly, as they headed towards the nearest town with a big casino that Jiraiya was tipped off by some shady people that Tsunade would be there, and were walking at a slow pace. For the millionth time, no. Jiraiya, as he had been hearing the same old thing from Naruto for the past 10 miles of walking, and it was getting on the man's nerves. The girls thought it was hilarious to see Jiraiya lose his cool. We would be there sooner if you used Toad Summoning, said Tenten, as she knew that summons could make travel time shorter, and right now she wanted to see her idol, right now. If I did that, 
Sonate would be onto me, and run off faster than I do when women catch me Pipa I mean researching for my books, said Jiraiya, as he laughed nervously, and tried to weather the storm of Tenten's angry glare while Hinata looked away blushing since she knew what those books entailed. Not that Hinata was a pervert or anything. It doesn't matter right now. Tsunade either runs from you Uro Senen or she runs from losing too much money when she gambles away what she bets, said Naruto, as he now transformed into his human venom state, grabbed both girls into one his left arm, and shot out a web line into the trees before swinging along with the girl screaming out at the feeling of nearly flying through the trees. Hey! Wait for me Yubaka! Not everyone here can do that, said Jiraiya before letting out a sigh of defeat, as he really wanted to move at his own pace in finding Tsunade, but no. He had to feel guilty for ignoring his godson, and make it up to the Namikaze through training with the side tastes of humiliation at the hands of the blonde's pranks. Elsewhere, are you sure about this Itachi? From what I heard, the kid is not a pushover anymore, and even helped kill the heavy Sanin, said a tall individual with a sword strapped to his back, and had sharp pointy teeth. Shark-like teeth. We have no choice Kisame. We have been ordered to track down the QB vessel and now we have him within our grasp. The only problem is Jiraiya of the Sanin, which can be dealt with by diverting the man away from our objective long enough to move in, and take the boy under the toad sage's nose, said Uchiha Itachi, as he had been given orders by Pain to retrieve the QB vessel, and prepare the boy to have the fox extracted from its human vessel. Okay, but remember you have to be careful Itachi since you can only use the special powers of those eyes of yours only so much, and will cause you to lose your eyesight, said Kisame seeing his partner's unconcerned expression and it irked him that the Uchiha didn't care about anything anymore. Well, as far as Kisame knew anyway. I know the limits of my eyes Kisame. Just be sure not to overstep yours, said Itachi, as the two moved into position to capture Naruto, and deal with Jiraiya in one moment. Kumo Rakage Tower, so our spies were correct when they told us that a Hyuga was with the Sanin and it is a young female main family member of the clan. She's without the cage bird seal on her forehead, which means if we captured her, we could learn the secret of the Byakugan, and use her later to breed our own little clan of Hyugas through her, said the Kumo Anbu in front of the Rakage, who was the brother of the Kumo diplomat that had been sent to Konoha for the treaty years ago only to die at the hands of a Hyuga member. Yes, but Jiraiya could be a problem, as well as the supposed offspring of the Yondaime himself with unusual powers at his command, and let's not forget the rumor about him being the vessel of the Kyubi. Still, the chance of a Hyuga being in our possession has been something that we have always wanted, and now we may never get an opportune time to try. Send a team of Anbu to retrieve the Hyuga girl and send Yugido to deal with this Namikaze heir, said the Rakage, as he couldn't risk the boy using his demonic powers on his Anbu squad, and destroy the capture team. But the Nibi vessel is no match for that of Kyuubi's own, said the Anbu, as he didn't understand what it was the Rakage was planning, and it concerned him greatly. She doesn't have to kill him Yubaka. Yugito will use her powers to stall the QB vessel long enough for the retrieval of the Hyuga and ensure our escape. They will wait until the Sanin is far enough away that they can strike and keep the boy occupied so the Anbu team can retrieve the girl or at the very least remove her eyes to take back here for further study, said the Rakage, who hated having to spell out the plan to the man, and wished for once all the competent shinobi besides himself weren't demon vessels under his command. I shall assemble an Anbu team right away Rakage-sama, said the Anbu, as the man bowed, and then left the man's presence to begin the operation. This time, I will have the eyes of the Hyuga clan in my grasp, and if this mission is truly successful, I will have my own clan of Hyuga in my own backyard, said the Rakage, as he grinned with excitement at the thought, and wondered how he should plan this out when it came to this opportunity once the girl was in his possession. Depending on her age, he could have her used to have a child or children even if he was lucky to get her to have twins, and if not then she could be persuaded to examine the eyes when she used them. Then when the children having part came along, she would be their teacher in what she knew, and when she was no longer useful physically, her eyes would be removed before throwing out the remnants of a once prized fine. It may cost him Yugito at the hands of Konoha's demon vessel, but the rakage could risk it, and was not afraid to risk the girl either. Nibi while two-tailed, had become very protective of her vessel, and made sure no male in Kumo could touch her even when she was a little girl. Even the Rakage himself had to be careful when near Yugito, as the flash of cat-like eyes that appeared when Yugito looked at him was in a way of letting the Nibi see whether or not he was allowed to be near her, and apparently let him near at a respectful distance. However, many people had learned the hard way that such respectful distances are not to be breached, and can lead to one's death if one is not careful. With Naruto, leave it to Uro Senen to go on one of his check on his informant's trips in order to do some perverted crap in the red light district of this town, said Naruto, as he sat with his back lying on the bed with Tenten, 
and Hinata in the room waiting for the Toad Sage to return. He is supposed to be the strongest of the Sanin Naruto-kun. Surely he deserves some form of recognition? Said Hinata, as she sat on the other bed, and Tenten was sitting in a chair polishing her sword she brought along with her. That and he peeps on women in the hot springs or bath houses for his perverted books that every woman in Konoha hates, said Naruto, as he never understood why the man did what he did when it came to his perverted ways, and while the blonde had no reason to talk on the fact he had two slaves back home, peeping on them was just wrong. Unless of course, they wanted to be around you barely, or entirely naked for you to see how beautiful they looked. Then it was okay. Naruto-kun has a point Hinata. I know for a fact that Tsunade would beat the bones of any man around her that was a pervert into dust and since her teammate is apparently a super pervert apostrophe dot 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 well I have a feeling the man is going to get beat up real soon, said Tenten, as she saw Hinata scowl at her for making the Hayuga look bad, and gain her Naruto's favor. Do you want to possess Naruto and tell them that he can be with both of them to help revive his clan or should I, said Kyuubi, as he sensed the brewing catfight that was to come, and wasn't sure if Naruto should interfere to defuse it, or be the referee. Decisions decisions. Nah. Chances are, Naruto will do something that allows him to get them both without the catfight, and then later on he can be the referee in their catfight if he asks them to be in one, said Venom, as he along with Kyuubi grinned like perverts, and waited to see what happened next. You know Naruto-kun, a thought has occurred to me, and it's quite a brain buster, said Tenten, as she put away her sword, and walked over to Naruto's bed with a sway in her hips while Hinata eyed her with a death glare. You better not be thinking of doing what I think you're thinking of doing with my Naruto-kun, thought Hinata, as she eyed the weapons girl, and saw the smirk on Tenten's face aimed at her making inner Hinata bounce off the walls. Oh! What is that Ten-chan? Said Naruto, as he looked up at Tenten now sitting on the edge of the bed near him and saw her looking at him with a very happy look on her face. Or was it a face of seduction? That Jiraiya isn't here, that we are, in this room, and all alone with no form of adult-like supervision while we ourselves are technically adults meaning that we can do adult-like things, said Tenten mischievously, as she ran a finger over Naruto's shirt, and felt his muscles underneath it that made her body tingle with excitement. Well, that is indeed a good point Ten-chan, said Naruto, as he had smelled the scent of honey coming off of Tenten and to a degree from Hinata since she had been eyeing him for quite some time. He smelled it on Kin a lot when he was home and recently Ino when she saw the two of them going at it before he left on this mission. Now the real question now is, what kind of adult things can we do for the many hours we have together? Said Tenten, as she moved onto the bed, and straddled Naruto's waist before leaning down to kiss him. Or rather, she would have, if one Hayuga Hinata not tackled her, and knocked all three of them off the bed. Okay. This wasn't how we pictured it, but this isn't half bad, said Naruto, as he was between each girl with their busts against his face, and each girl glaring at each other in their tangled position. You're not doing that with him so long as I'm here Tenten, said Hinata, as she was not going to sit by, and watch this tramp get to Naruto first. Aside from him having Ken and possibly Ino on such a level, the only one that Hinata intended Naruto to be intimate with was her. Then leave, said Tenten, as she wished she could reach for one of her weapons, but the entanglement she was in prevented it, and she noticed the same for Hinata when it came to one of her hands. A hand that was along Naruto's back near the waist. Buns of steel. I knew it. I've wanted to do this for a long while. I just hope Naruto-kun doesn't say anything. Thought Hinata, as her hand that was ever so innocently placed there was now gently feeling around Naruto buttock and her inner pervert that was inner Hinata was making a map of his muscled ass from what she could feel with the roaming hand from outer Hinata. You're one to talk you little ass grabber, said Tenten angrily, as she saw what Hinata was doing, and wanted to do that herself. Just not with Hinata around. Oh, like I haven't seen the way you want to ride him like a horse, and polish his sword you feminist bitch, said Hinata, as she felt more bold than ever, and was not about to let this girl take her boy away. Girls, said Naruto, as he saw the two were ready to get in the other's face, and not in the way he would like it to be done. Hayuga snob, said Tenten, as she could almost move one of her hands to reach for a kunai, and get this clan empowered girl away from Naruto. Weapons junkie, said Hinata, as she saw Tenten bristle at that, and was now really trying to move her hand to the weapons pouch at her leg. Fate worshipper, said Tenten, as she was now breathing angrily at Hinata, and Hinata doing the same. Girls, said Naruto, as he didn't want them literally fighting over him, and would prefer to prevent a serious bloodbath. Tomboy whore, said Hinata, as she was less than an inch from Tenten's face, and each had eyes of bloodlust in them. Stalking slut, said Tenten, as she finally got her hand free, 
and moved it to her weapons pouch. Girls, yelled Naruto, as he was tired of their name calling, and their mere moments away from killing each other. What? yelled the two back at him, but any response that Naruto originally had was interrupted by a knock at the door, and somehow breaking the magical spell that held that moment together. Um, we need to get the door, said Naruto, as he flexed his form with acrobatic skills that were unnatural to many to get out of, and leapt to the door before shooting the two girls an apologetic look. Had they not been angry at each other along with the knocking at the door, Naruto would have pounced on the opportunity, and made sure both girls enjoyed their time with him. After opening the door, Naruto came face to face with two individuals that were wearing straw hats, and black cloaks with red clouds on them. The one on the right was taller with blue skin and carrying a sword while the other had black hair with black eyes that almost reminded Naruto of Sasuke. Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, you will come with us right now, said the shorter dark-haired individual and made Naruto narrow his eyes at him. You are disturbing some serious alone time we have right now with two hot girls in here so unless you want us to go demon on your ass, get lost, said Naruto before he slammed the door in their faces, much to their surprise, and the fact the boy had two girls in the room with him. Did he just slam the door on us? Said Kisame, as his brain was still computing what it was that just happened, and kept coming up with does not compute in his head. I think he did. That has, never happened before, said Itachi, who wondered if the boy knew who they were, and if he did, why he wasn't afraid of them. Should we knock the door down or knock a second time? Said Kisame, as he knew that Itachi was the brains of the duo in this team, and it was his call. Let's knock. If we make two noise it will draw attention to us and we'll draw Jiraiya here as well. I would prefer not to fight one of the Sanin unless it was absolutely necessary, said Itachi, as he knocked again, and hoped for the best in not getting any form resistance from the Namikaze. You two are still here? Look, whatever it is you're both selling, we are not interested in buying, and for the record, congratulations in being able to walk in public as a couple, said Naruto before he began shutting the door and secretly grinned at their now green-colored faces while they shivered in disgust. Screw holding back Itachi. I am not about to stand here and be told that I'm gay by this brat, yelled Kisame, as he took out his sword, and saw Naruto change into his human venom form with the two girls he mentioned earlier coming out of the room to see what was happening. Did you have to call them gay Naruto-kun? said Tenten, as she took out her sword, and prepared for battle while Hinata activated her eyes before getting into her gentle fist stance. We never said they were gay Ten-chan. He's the one that said it, so that being said it must be true, and he really is gay, said Naruto seeing Kisame was now seeing red and took a swing at him only to miss. I'll kill you for that accusation, yelled Kisame, as he was not gay, and was not about to tolerate such things because he had his fingers permanently painted like a lady along with Itachi. I knew I shouldn't have messed with his head when I first joined and forced him to read gay porn while in the Tsukiyomi realm when he made a crack about me not getting any, thought Itachi, as he had to show Kisame he was not someone to push around, and that trying to insult an Uchiha of his level was not wise. Sometimes Itachi's worst enemy in terms of greatness was in fact, Itachi himself. And what's with those teeth? How many guys have you kissed with a mouth like that? Said Naruto, as he took a page out of one of Venom's previous hosts, and taunted the man in front of him. Shut up. I like women. You hear me? Only women, yelled Kisame, as he was getting seriously pissed off at Naruto, and swung his sword at the boy again only to hit wall that came tumbling down. Says the guy with a sword to compensate for his penis being so small. Do you even have one? Or are you sexually challenged and on the receiving end of it? Said Naruto, as he jumped over Kisame, and shot webbing at the swordsman's feet before he pulled causing the former Miss Shinobi to fall on his face. Enough. Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto, if you do not come with us right now, we will take our frustrations out on these two, and place their demise on your head, said Itachi, as he had easily defeated the two female shinobi, and had them pinned under each arm by their necks. You are making a big mistake Itachi. If you do not let them go right now, we will make you beg for the Sinigami before the day is over, and we will see to it that every waking moment you are with us before then is that of a living hell, said Naruto, as he was now getting angry that Itachi would hurt those close to him and whatever made a Namikaze upset, live to regret it later on. If such things live long enough to do so. While your transformation is impressive Naruto, I doubt even you have the means to overpower one such as me considering my own level, and those I hold in my possession that I could kill in mere seconds, said Itachi, as he saw the girls trying to break free, but the grip on their necks made them think twice, and the chance of them having their necks snapped was too high. Why is it that even someone like you always, keep underestimating me, said Naruto, as he went to the next level of venom, 
and used the surprise on Itachi's face in the brief second to get close enough to Itachi to make the man let go of his hostages while just escaping the clawed hands of Naruto's demonized venom state. Seeing them free, Naruto grabbed them both, and leapt back a good distance from Itachi, and are now calm along with being free Kisame. Fortunately, Sasuke made his appearance around the corner with a look of hatred in his eyes when looking at Itachi, and charged at him with a Chidori to use in the means of slaying his older brother. Such childish behavior you possess little brother. How is it that you are so weak and be of our clan's blood even I will never understand, said Itachi, as he easily broke Sasuke's hand, disabled the Chidori, and knocked his younger brother into a nearby wall before locking Sharingan eyes on him. I, hate, you, said Sasuke, as he found himself unable to move because of the pain, and was pinned at the neck by Itachi's arm. And yet you are weak Sasuke. No matter, as you will now relive that moment all those years ago when I did the one thing you thought I would never do, and took everything away. Sukiyomi. Said Itachi, as he sent Sasuke into that dark realm, and made him relieve the Uchiha massacre all over again. Never fear Jiraiya is here, said Jiraiya, as he appeared having stopped the Genjutsu-influenced woman from distracting him further, and come in on small yet still space-consuming Toad. You're a bit late Urosenin. So be a good old Toad and leave this problem to us, said Naruto, as Tenten, and Hinata prepared to fight Kisame while he himself moved to jump over the homophobic fish to reach Itachi. Kisame, we need to move, as we cannot take on Jiraiya, and the others in our current condition, said Itachi, as this was more for him then his partner after using his clan's eyes to use that power. Really? Damn. I wanted to get another shot in at the kid or those two girls with him to see which one I can shave off first, said Kisame, as used his blade to block the weapons Tenten threw at him, and followed Itachi around the corner. Oh no you don't, said Jiraiya, as he makes quick hand signs, and slammed his hands down turning the whole inner hallway around them into the inner esophagus of a giant toad. Yubaka, said Naruto now hanging upside down on a web line while doing the same for the girls, as the spider part that Venom took from Spider-Man took a long time ago did not like being swallowed up the throat of a toad, and was getting upset that Jiraiya did that. Oh suck it up. Just don't move and you'll be fine. It's those two that are in trouble, said Jiraiya, as he directed the throat of the giant toad attack the two members of Akatsuki now trying to flee. Itachi. An escape route would be perfect right about now, said Kisame, as he battled the strange tentacle-like things with Seimata, and was waiting for Itachi to try getting them out of this place. Amaterasu, said Itachi, as he blasted a hole in the giant toad's body, and the two were able to escape before they were swallowed up. That's interesting, said Jiraiya, as he cancelled the jutsu, and saw the black flames left behind by Itachi's eye power. There's something you don't see every day, said Naruto back in his clothed form with Hinata and Tenten beside him. I'll seal this up for further study, in the meantime I want you three to collect your stuff so we can move out, and catch up with our next contact to find Tsunade, said Jiraiya, as he sealed up the fire, and was about to follow the trio in front of him when he got a good kick to the face after hearing dynamic entry, being shouted for all of them to hear. Again, there is something you don't really see every day with a weird super eyebrow bowl shaped haired guy wearing green spandex kicking a super pervert into a wall, and yet, that was kind of funny, thought Naruto seeing Mito guy sending out wave after wave of apology to the Sanin, who was now sporting a rather big bump on his forehead, and looked like he was mentally cursing at the Jounin for kicking him in the head despite the apologies. If you are done talking to your new friend Uro Senen, we need to get going, and find Sanade so she can become the new Hokage, said Naruto, as he was all ready, and so were his two female teammates also ready to move out. With their occasional glaring at each other to back off their man happening every few seconds. How many times have I told you not to call me that? No respect for their elders these days, said Jiraiya, as he sighed, and told Guy to report to the Hokage on his findings along with taking Sasuke to the hospital. Tanzaku City one week later, finally. We've arrived at this stupid place. Took us long enough considering we had to drag your Sarius all the way, said Naruto, as he had web lined the currently injured Sanin along the dirt road since the man was caught peeping on the women on the hot springs not far from here and resulted in the Toad Sage's current physical condition. Well maybe if you hadn't blown my cover or prevented my escape we wouldn't be in this situation, said Jiraiya, who got a kick to the head by Tenten, and a glare from Hinata since they had been on of the females in the hot spring. Need we remind you just who was on the other side of those walls you were peeping on? Said Naruto, as he saw the man grin sheepishly at that, and earned him another kick to the head only this time it was from Hinata while making a mental note in her head to tell her father. Oh yes, Jiraiya would be in deep trouble with the Hyuga clan when he came back to Konoha, and make the Sanin very nervous when setting foot in the clan compound if he were invited. 
Good point, said Jiraiya before Naruto finally stopped dragging him and freed him from the webbing to move on his own. Above them, there they are, said the Kumo Anbu captain, as he saw the group walking through the city, and seemed to be heading to the bars or gambling parlors. It seems the intelligence we gathered seems to be right in regards to them looking for Tsunade was correct. If she comes back and becomes the new Hokage or at the very least the Sandaime's advisor, said another Anbu knowing what it could mean for Konoha if another Sanin returned to the village. Konoha's power will increase greatly and put us at a disadvantage, said Yugito, as she knew of the legendary skills of the Sanin, and just what they could do. So why did the Rakage have to send her on another suicide mission? Again. Was that all she was good for? To be sent on missions that others couldn't do and with the all likelihood be killed too? Granted, Yugito knew this would be her life the moment she learned of Nibi inside of her, and was groomed to be the Rakage's weapon to fight at his command. Like a servant or mindless beast that only healed at her master's feet when he commanded her to she obeyed his every word. But in her mind, Yugito wondered if this was what she wanted in life, and the Nibi had told her on several times that there was no joy in serving the Rakage. Yugito wanted to run away, but the threat of Akatsuki was something to consider when the Rakage told her of the organization currently hunting those like her, and felt that the safest place to be was currently in Kumo. So why did the Rakage constantly want her to go into life and death situations? He fears you kitten and rightfully so. The only reason you can't beat him is because he has people watching you and let's not forget the man's brother. That one also holds one of my demon kin, who will be able to defeat you easily, and will see to it that your life is forever miserable should you not be killed. You know what would happen if you ran and were caught by Kumo's hunter Nin's kitten. I was able to use my power in order to temporarily enhance your hearing from outside the rakage tower to hear the secret orders he gave them so I know just as you do, said Nibi, as she felt her vessel shiver slightly though it wasn't noticeable to the Anbu team she was with, and she cast a careful eye at them knowing what it was that Nibi was referring to. Yugito's only choice it seemed at the moment was to stay loyal to Kumo or at least, until things went her way long enough to escape to someplace where she could be safe. We move after they meet Senju Tsunade. Yugito will bait the Kyubi vessel and Jiraiya of the Sani while the rest of us take the other two with us back to Kumo. The one with her hair like a panda can be interrogated for any information she may possess on Konoha that we can use in the future, said the Anbu captain, as saw the other nod their head, and Yugito continued to look at Naruto with a stony expression on her face. The boy may have more power, but I've got more experience, and that is the key for this mission to being a success, thought Yugito, as she felt the power radiating off of Naruto and it was telling her not to toy with the Namikaze. They won't expect us at all and I hear that the slug princess has no love for Konoha anymore. If things go well after this, we should ask the Rakage to try to get her on our side, and increase Kumo's power in the process, said the Anbu captain before the group retreated back and waited for the team from Konoha to meet the Sanin. A few hours later, Tsunade, said Jiraiya, as he entered the bar, and saw the blonde beauty sitting down to a drink after a long day of losing while not paying any of her debts to people she owed money to too. Jiraiya? You old pervert, what the hell are you doing here, and why are those three with you? Said Tsunade, as she originally suspected that the man took another team again, but the blonde was wearing a black chonin vest underneath his black trench coat, and the other two girls beside him weren't. Relax Tsunade, I just came here to talk to you on behalf of the old man and to tell you he wants you to return to Konoha to become the next Hokage, said Jiraiya, who saw the woman scowl at him, and then down at the drink that was on the table before her. No. I will not return to that horrible place that my family died for. Why would you even think that I would remotely consider it? Said Tsunade, as she saw Shizun look at her with a side glance, and the pig in her arms feeling uncomfortable while being so close to the blonde. That's a shame for even turning it down considering the old man can't be the Hokage anymore after his fight with Orochimaru that we helped stop and allowed us to finally kill our old teammate, said Jiraiya, as she saw Tsunade look up at her in shock, and so did Shizun next to her since they had heard the rumors yet didn't think they were true. So the rumors are true, said Tsunade, as she felt a small part of her mourn for her old teammate, but it was crushed when the fact that he tried to kill their sensei echoed into her brain, and deep down, she was glad Orochimaru was dead. Yep. Though I can say the outcome would have been different had it not been for a prisoner we captured during the Chunin exams that knew enough details to let the old man prepare the village for the invasion Orochimaru created. The plan was ingenious in itself in using Suna's pain to make them ally themselves with him despite the death of their Kazekage prior to the invasion and it might have worked too had this kid not given us the key piece we needed, said Jiraiya point to Naruto, who looked at Tsunade with an unreadable expression, and Tsunade wondered how this kid was able to accomplish what he did. Oh really? What's the brat's name? Said Tsunade, 
as she the two girls next to the boy trying to get closer to the blonde while trying to be polite, and not kill the other in her presence. Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto. My godson, and yours too Tsunade, said Jiraiya, as he saw Tsunade's eyes widen at that, and her body tense like she was getting ready to bolt out of the building like she owed a debt to someone. In this case, she did. Don't even think about running granny. You like Uro Sen and owe us 12 years of your life to us that we will never get because you both ran like cowards. Your debt must be paid now and if you don't come back to Konoha willingly, we will take you by force, said Naruto, as his clothing rippled in front of Tsunade, and it made both women in front of him just as nervous as the pig Shizun was holding. What's this we stuff brat? Why are you talking in third person? Said Tsunade, as she began to wonder if Naruto had some kind of brain problem that had him say everything that he should in first person go to third person speech. Tsunade, what happened to Naruto after you left in regards to his speaking is a high S class secret, and can't be spoken in such a public place. For now, we being the term here for this team of Leaf Shinobi, needs you to come back with us to Konoha, and be the next Hokage in place of our sensei, said Jiraiya, as he really hated repeating himself, and the look on Tsunade's face told him she was not going embrace the offer in being the Hokage for the Leaf. Why are you asking her again? She doesn't want the job. Let's leave this dried up thing that was once a legendary shinobi, who is descended down from one of the founders of Konoha, and related to the first two Hokages while being the student of the San Daime so we can break the old man's heart ourselves, said Naruto, as he saw the angry look in Tsunade's eyes, and the disbelief he said that from the two girls close to him. You have a lot of nerve to speak to your betters like this brat. You have no right to insult your godmother that, said Tsunade, as she rose from her seat, and sent a death glare at Naruto and you have no right to call yourself our godmother. You left after Jiraiya did so that makes you just as guilty if not more than him. If anyone has the nerve to speak out of line to their betters, it's you, said Naruto, as his eyes were a cold blue that made Tsunade become surprised that the boy could show such eyes to her, and while it unnerved her slightly, it wasn't enough to intimidate her to the point of backing down. Not to someone that could be her proverbial grandson. How dare you? Let's take this outside Brad and we'll see just who is left standing from the fight afterwards, said Tsunade, as she got out of her chair, and was now in Naruto's face. Fine by us granny. This place will smell without you in it anyway, said Naruto, as he could smell the heavy stench of sake on her breath, and it told him she wasn't fully sober enough to fight at full strength. This is going to get ugly, thought Jiraiya, as he sighed, and walked out with the others to see this Disam fight get underway. With the group now outside, Naruto stood casually on one side of the street, and Tsunade on the other looking confident that this kid in front of her couldn't so much as lay a hand on her. Granted, Tsunade was slightly drunk from all the sake, but she believed that while this kid was strong, had no chance of beating her, and she had a bit of an arrogant looking stance that was not unlike a certain Uchiha back home. Let's make this quick so Shizun and I can get out of here. If you track me down, then chance are the debt collectors I owe are not far behind, and I'd rather not have to pay them any time soon, said Tsunade, as she beckoned him forward, and saw Naruto smirk at her like he had some devious plan in mind. Sure. We need to get back home too since my sexy slave kin will need some cuddle time with me after being away for so long and will want me to ravish her for hours on end until she unconscious, said Naruto making Hinata, Tenten, and Shizun blush while Jiraiya had the urge to write in his notebook to use that for his research material. He had to hold back when he remembered the threat Naruto gave him if he ever did that. Use anything about me or any woman we are with in your research, we will remove your balls out from your ass, and then force feed them down your throat. Damn. Kushina said nearly the exact same thing to me when she and Minato were first dating in secret. Like mother like son when it comes to threats, thought Jiraiya, as he saw Naruto capitalize on Tsunade's stunned reaction and dashed forward at incredible speed that further stunned everyone around him that allowed the Namikaze to hit the Sanin right in the face with his knee. That was a cheap shot brat. And what's this about you having a slave? No one's had a slave since my sensei was in his prime and even then it was rare, said Tsunade, as she wondered just what had been happening in her grandfather's village, and how this kid got a slave of all things. Oh, well long story short, the girl on the sound team at the Chonin exams defected, and became our slave in the process in order to protect her from Orochimaru. Now Ino from the Yamanaka clan being our second slave, is a different story since she violated Konoha's clan laws, and kind of had to be in order to not have her memory erased or be put to death, said Naruto shocking Tsunade, which resulted in Naruto shooting webbing from the back of his hand from what looked like fingerless gloves, and wrapped the long stream of webbing around her ankles before pulling to get the Sanin right off her feet. He has two slaves. Thought Tsunade and Shizun, 
as they looked surprisingly at Naruto, and the slug princess felt she needed to have a serious talk with the Sandaime. What? It's all legal. The old man signed off on it himself. You have a problem with it, then come back to Konoha with us, and do something about it. Though we can guarantee that Kin won't want to leave us and depending on how Ino is when we get back after a few days she won't either, said Naruto, who now had a far away almost perverted look on his face, and it was making Tsunade really angry. And just how old are these two slaves of his? Said Shizune to Jiraiya, who looked at Naruto before turning back to Tsunade with a conflicted look on his face. Both are his age give or take a couple of months, though I'm not exactly sure on that, and they each became his slaves within weeks of the other two, said Jiraiya making his former teammate now see red with a face to match, and ripped off the webbing around her ankles with her super strength before charging at Naruto with the intent of knocking the boy's teeth out. Naruto himself leapt out of the way just in time, as his spider sense told him that he should move, and he was glad he did since the blow that was aimed at him created a crater when it hit earth when it missed him. Now clinging to the wall above her, Naruto was very much impressed with her strength, as it was everything Jiraiya said it was, and was something to be careful in terms of avoiding. Not bad Tsunade. Uro Senen wasn't kidding when he said your punches were powerful when you wanted them to be and to avoid if possible, said Naruto, as he transformed his clothing into his venom form, and tilted his head to the side while his mask hid his face from her. Then he also told you that it only takes one of my punches to knock you down so you can't get up, said Tsunade, as she leapt upward and aimed another punch at him with this one missing like the first. That he did. He also mentioned a certain incident when you, Uro Senen, and the heavy team had a late night drink with gambling involved. He still has the photos of you in a very, unique state in the aftermath of it all, said Naruto seeing Tsunade getting even redder in the face and was now glaring at Jiraiya, who was trying to sneak away, and was stopped by his teammate's killer intent. You said you destroyed all those photos, said Tsunade, as she knew she should have checked herself, but leave her to trust a super pervert to throw away potential perverted material, and not hold on to a piece of it. I did. Well, most of it anyway. Come on Tsunade, you look so beautiful in that picture, and it seemed to be a crime for destroying it, said Jiraiya, who saw the angry look not only in Tsunade's eyes, but in Tenten's face too since the girl idolized Tsunade, and wasn't about to have her idol's honor tarnished after a night of drinking. Tell you what brat, I'll deal with you after I deal with my old teammate, and then I'm out of here, said Tsunade, as she looked dangerously at her teammate, and Jiraiya knew from his experience when it comes to angry women that you run or you die. Or pray to Kami you had. Whatever. Just beat the crap out of him and we can call a temporary truce for the day, said Naruto, as he saw the pleading look on Jiraiya's face, and when the Sanin turned to run he saw Hinata standing in his way. Not good, thought Jiraiya, as he turned around and found Tsunade along with Tenten having him surrounded with his back against the wall. Literally. Any last requests before I wail on you? Said Tsunade, as she cracked her knuckles, and Tenten took out a pair of kunai in each of hers. Um, mercy? Said Jiraiya, as he had his hands raised in the hope Tsunade would spare him, and just let him off the hook. He would have had a better chance of bartering with the Sinigami. Oh, I'm so sorry to tell you this, but I seem to be all out of mercy however, I do have a two for one special, and it's connected to my fists, said Tsunade, as she began to wail on her teammate, and ignore his pleas for mercy along with the other two. And the old monkey wants her to be the next Hokage? Are you sure the man took his medication when you spoke with him? Said Venom inside Naruto's head while Naruto himself shook his head at this and wondered that himself. Two days and long talk later, after burning out the sake in her system by pounding the crap out of Jiraiya, she heard the details behind the invasion from Naruto and his life growing up without anyone with the exception of the Hokage supporting him. Given her sensei's age, it was no surprise to Tsunade that the man had been lifting more than he could, and felt guilty for not sharing the load the old man was slowly being crushed under. So, will you be coming back with us to Konoha, and take over for the old monkey with him being your advisor? We gave him the secret to defeating paperwork and we can to with you if you agree, said Naruto as he was hanging upside down from the ceiling of Tsunade's rented room at the hotel she was staying at on a web line while seeing the look of surprise on Tsunade's face, and thought of using that in order to get more time relaxing with a bottle of sake in hand. Well, considering I owe you anyway, I don't think I can really turn it down, and if I became Hokage I could get rid of those annoying debt collectors. Plus, I think Shizune would like to go home to pay her respects her uncle, and I need to do the same with my family since it's been long overdue, said Tsunade, as she decided that the best way to deal with her problems with Konoha were to deal with them on the inside, and take care of the counsels that have been making her sensei's life miserable. Great. Once the pervert is healed up, we can go right back to Konoha, 
and you can become the new Hokage, said Naruto, as he maneuvered himself to the open window, and looked back to see Tsunade smirk at him. So these two slave girls you have are being treated fairly, right? Said Tsunade, as she wanted to make sure her godson was being good to the female gender, and at least not using them like toys for his own amusement. Of course. Kin loves being with me considering her past with Orochimaru wasn't what you call pleasant and Inochan is, learning with the help of Kin and obeying her master. All I've had her do is do some chores around the Namikaze estate, but she seems to be a little rebellious since her parents kind of spoiled her slightly, and has a bossy nature about her so it's only natural she would be against being a slave, said Naruto with his masked eyes going into a U-shape like Kakashi sometimes did before Webb swinging off back to his hotel where the others were waiting. Do you really plan to go back to Konoha to become the next Hokage Tsunade-sama? Said Shizun, as she saw her teacher of the medical arts close her eyes, and nod her head. I owe that boy for so much because of my departure from the leaf because of my pain when he was living his own that he shouldn't have. I was his godmother and for an over a decade I failed to live up to the title of one. I intend to be both his godmother and the Hokage while trying to make sure neither conflicts or prevents him from doing his duty as a shinobi, said Tsunade, as she wondered how her sensei was able to keep the boy alive for so long, and not lose him to the Sinigami. That and you want to make sure Jiraiya-san doesn't use Naruto's slaves for his books, said Shizun, as she could always see to some degree into her mind when it came to the connection with Jiraiya. That too, said Tsunade, as she looked at the bed being used to hold the said pervert until he was properly healed, and then they could move out quickly. Naruto, Tenten, and Hinata's hotel room, I still can't believe you prevented me from getting busy with Naruto-kun, said Tenten, as she sat with her back on the bed looking up at the ceiling, and wished for her Naruto-kun to come back. First off, he's my Naruto-kun, and even if he can have multiple wives because of his clan, you have to get in line, said Hinata, as she was in a meditative stance on her bed, and mentally sent a glare to the girl across the room. You're Naruto-kun? As far as I'm concerned, he's fair game, and that means the one that gets to him first will make the other girl wait, said Tenten, as she sat up, and readied her weapons that came out of her wrists from her long-sleeved shirt. For normally being so shy and stuttering Tenten was surprised Hinata was doing so little. Of course, this conversation involved Naruto, and Hinata no longer had to worry about clan affairs from stopping her from pursuing the blonde like before. However, such thoughts, and or the impending conflict that was meant to happen soon between the two leaf shinobi did not happen due to the outside wall of their room having exploded knocking the two off their beds. We must hurry. Yugito can only hold off the Kyubi vessel for so long, said the Kumo Anbu captain, as his team swarmed in to engage the two girls, and retrieve the Hyuga girl to take back to Kumo. Though the Anbu team from Kumo found they weren't fighting weak leaf shinobi like they originally anticipated. With Naruto, Naruto had been having a semi-good day and was hope it would have gotten better now that Tsunade had agreed to come back the leaf while beating up Jiraiya to help seal the deal. Unfortunately, it was ruined by the unexpected detection of danger, and the dark blue flames on the rooftop he had landed on when his spider sense went off. At first, Naruto thought it was Itachi again, but he noticed the fire around him was different in color compared to what Itachi used to escape Jiraiya's grasp. I cannot let you return to your hotel room Namikaze-sama, said Ni Yugito, as she appeared through the flames, and got into a fighting stance while covering her hands. This is a surprise. Akumo Shinobi out here fighting us. To be honest, we were actually expecting Iwa Shinobi to pop up, and try to kill us for being a Namikaze. But a Shinobi from Kumo is a new one unless your rakage has some kind of grudge against our family on our mother's side, said Naruto, as he narrowed his eyes at Yugito, and saw the girl tense under his gaze while feeling his power slowly condense while rising at the same time. Regardless of the reason, I cannot let you pass, and I will stop you at the cost of my life, said Yugito, as she said the last word with a noticeably less zenith than she would have liked to have expressed, and it didn't go unnoticed by Naruto. You are like us. Kyuubi tells me you hold the two-tailed Nibi inside of you, but unlike us you were used as a tool for war, and served a cage that only cared about you being successful in your missions, said Naruto, as he saw her eyes widen, and then narrow at him with cat-like eyes now glaring at him. You know nothing. Even if you are the container of the QB, you are still a child speaking like an adult, and could not comprehend what it means to serve such a person knowing that leaving would just mean certain death. Or worse if caught and returned home to face punishment, said Yugito, as she struggled to keep the orders she heard the hunter nins were given to them by the rakage out of her head, and the nightmares she would have at times that Nibi couldn't stop from happening about her worst fear coming true. Your right vessel of the Nibi. We do not know what it means to serve a master like yours, nor do we wish to, but if you come with us back to Konoha, 
we can guarantee you can find a life there without Kumo being able to reach you, and give you the freedom you deserve, said Naruto, as he saw her look at him, and before she could question whether or not he was lying he did something that caught her by surprise. He removed his mask to show his blue eyes. Eyes that held no lies, no deceit, and told her that through him, she could find peace in Konoha. That he would protect her from harm when she couldn't protect herself and that Akatsuki would not be able to reach her within Konoha's walls. There is no lying in this one kitten. Go to him. Trust him. The rakage has pushed you around because of me for too long. All that pig sees is the means to get power and sooner or later he will try to use you to breed powerful shinobi that he thinks will be infused with my power. All he needs is a group of males willing to get near you, which have not turned up because of me preventing it, but that can only go so far, and he will find a way to nullify my powers long enough to tie you down. I know that you do not want that kitten. This boy is like us in holding one of my kin in him and like you he was hated for what he had, but got a lucky break because of his revealed clan heritage. Now this same boy is offering you a chance at a lucky break by coming with him to the leaf and be under his protection by the Hokage. A soon-to-be female Hokage, who will make sure no man touches you unless you want him to, and find the happiness you deserve, said Nibi, as she wanted her vessel to be happy, and this boy that was like her could give it to her without anything in return except accepting the offer. What will happen if I were to defect to Konoha? What kind of loops would I have to jump through in order to please your fire shadow? Said Yugito, as she wanted to find out if this boy could answer her question, and see if he understood that not everything was so simple in leaving one village for another. We honestly do not know. It is all up to the Hokage, who in this case will most likely be Senju Tsunade, but just in case you get the old man, we would say just be truthful to him about whatever it is he asks, and he'll accept you without question while keeping your secret about the Nibi inside of you a secret, said Naruto, as he saw the pain from her past in her eyes, and how she wanted to jump at the chance to take it. I'll help you, but you must make sure I can get to Konoha safely, and keep your word that I will not be used as a weapon for your village like I was in Kumo, said Yugito, as she removed the fire around them, and stood normally before the Namikaze. We promise on our clan honor that nothing will happen to you so long as we, Namikaze Uzumaki Naruto live in this world, and will do whatever we can to keep this promise. It is our Nindo to not break a promise since breaking it would be dishonorable to us, said Naruto, as he saw Yugito nod her head, and for the first time in a long time, she smiled. Ni Yugito is at your service Naruto-sama, said Yugito, as she bowed, and saw him waving his hands at her to tell her to stop. Stop it. Stop it. Don't call me Naruto-sama, we're 12 years old going on 13 years for Kami's sake, and being called Naruto-sama is the last thing we want. Naruto will do or maybe Naruto-san. Just know Naruto-sama, said Naruto, who saw Yugito nod her head, and was surprised that boy in front of her was 12 years old since his body looked so mature for his age. Very mature. What am I thinking? I can't get involved with him. No matter how sexy he looks like the weight stop you're thinking is aimed in the wrong direction again, thought Yugito, as she blushed in the darkness of the night, and then it left her when she remembered that she was the distraction for her mission. Turning around she ran towards Naruto's hotel room with Naruto right next to her. We take it, you wish to show me something? Said Naruto, as he saw her nod her head, and saw her power flare again. I was the distraction to keep you at bay until an Anbu team from Kumo came to take the Hyuga girl that was with you back to Kumo and the other one too for questioning on info regarding Konoha. We need to intercept them before they leave for the rendezvous point that will allow them to get to Kumo without any kind of opposition, said Yugito, who then let out a squeak when Naruto quickly grabbed her, and he jumped into the air before Webb swinging towards his room. They won't do anything to them during their trip, will they? Said Naruto, as his mask was on, and was moving faster than he had before, and knew that time was of the essence here. Not to the Hyuga. She is the prize for the rakage to study the eyes of her clan, but the other one you are with added bun-like hair will not be so fortunate, and they may if they get bored, said Yugito, as she was silently having the time of her life, and almost didn't wish for this to end. They better not if they wish for their deaths to be clean and quick, said Naruto, as he went up a level, and made his appearance bulkier while accelerating his speed to his hotel room. He couldn't be too late. Naruto wouldn't forgive himself if something happened to those two.